What's good YouTube? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be continuing the series of doing some preseason scouting uh, for the 2022 NBA Draft. I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts on today's prospect and most importantly I want to hear your guys' thoughts so make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. But today's video will be on Imani Bates and he's a strange case as right now he's not even a player who's eligible for the 2022 NBA Draft. He'll need to get a waiver if he will be or to make himself eligible for the draft and so it's a little different uh, we're not sure I guess at the moment if he will get that waiver I'll talk about that a little more in a second uh, but with that being said let's get into the video so who is Imani Bates and what makes him a potential top prospect in this year's NBA draft well Imani Bates is a freshman at the University of Memphis He's actually a player who reclassified from the high school class of 2022 and decided to become a freshman this year in college. And that's part of the reason why he'll need a waiver uh, from the NBA to become eligible for the draft. Uh, at the moment, he's actually not old enough to declare uh, when the season happens or when the draft happens. He'll not be, he will not be old enough for that. And so that's the reason for you know having to get a waiver. Uh, when he reclassified, uh, most draft analysts you know made it pretty clear that he would not be eligible for this year's draft and that he'd need that waiver and at the time it sounded like the NBA would probably not grant that waiver uh, as they don't want to make an exception for him because then you know they'd have to make an exception for everyone else his family seemed pretty confident that they could get that waiver now we're a couple months removed I haven't heard anything of it but you know like I said at the moment he's not eligible but you know, just for the sake of this video and, and some scouting for him, uh, I'm gonna, you know, assume that he will be eligible and go off that. Now, Imani himself is a pretty unique prospect. He's a six-seven small forward, very skilled player, and you know, early in his high school career, he was thought to be one of the best high school prospects ever. Early in his career, he was compared to players like LeBron James, Kevin Durant. And as early as his freshman or sophomore year in high school, he was ranked as the best prospect in high school, regardless of class. And so he had high expectations. Uh, people thought, you know, very highly of him. And as his time in high school continued, uh, those expectations diminished to an extent. Uh, depending on what website you look at for the rankings uh, of his class when he was part of the class of 2022, he was still either the top prospect or the number two prospect in the class once he reclassified to the class of 2021 i believe he ended up finishing around third to fifth depending on what you know recruiting website you looked at so he's still you know considered a top prospect but the thought of him being the next lebron james or kevin durant or someone in that category uh those thoughts have kind of diminished since you know his early times in high school So what are some of the strengths that make Imani Bates one of the top prospects in this year's NBA draft? Well, I think the biggest strength for Imani Bates is his shot creation ability slash scoring ability. He's arguably one of, if not the best scorer in this year's NBA draft class. He's 6'7", he plays that small four position, so he has you know ideal size uh, for that spot. And he uses that size to score in a variety of ways. He's able to score at all three levels and you know when he's scoring the ball when he's taking you know good shots when he's in a rhythm when he lets the offense kind of come to him and plays you know more free rather than forcing things which he tends to do at times uh, like I said he's one of the best in the class starting with his you know three-point ability uh, really great in catch-and-shoot situations he's shown flashes of having deep three-point range which I definitely think you know he'll need in college is Memphis kind of lacks shooting and they're gonna need him to be you know that 40% three-point shooter I think he's definitely capable of doing that uh, and so like I said three-point ability uh, is there for him and I think he's gonna have to really show that at Memphis this year he's also able to get into those mid-range areas I think that's maybe where he's at his best you know scoring the ball is getting to those you know mid-range areas I always talk about the elbows I think he's a good player you know from that elbow spot and just you know using his size to shoot over you know smaller defenders and then going to the hoop that's an area of his game where it's definitely a work in progress he'll improve as he you know adds size to his frame 
but he still flashes ability to be that three level scorer that you want at the you know college level and then eventually the NBA level. Some other strengths for Imani are that he's shown flashes when playing with better teammates of some playmaking ability and maybe even potentially the ability to play some point guard. I know it's been rumored that Penny will be having him play some point guard at Memphis. But like I said, when he's played with better teammates, he's shown some playmaking ability, which if he's able to become, you know, a better playmaker and someone who can do more than just score the ball, that, you know, raises his stock, you know, a whole lot more than it already is and may cement him as being, you know, the number one, you know, prospect in this year or next year's NBA draft. Uh, some other strengths of his are, you know, his positional size, which I've talked about. He should have great defensive ability with, you know, being 6'7", lanky, a good athlete. He should be able to be someone who can really, you know, switch one through three, sometimes maybe even one through four in today's NBA. And so, you know, you combine his scoring ability, the potential for being a playmaker, and, you know, some defensive flexibility, you definitely have, you know, someone who could be the number one pick, you know, in the NBA draft someday. So Imani Bates definitely has some weaknesses or areas of his game that he's going to have to clean up. The first and probably most obvious with Imani is his frame. Uh, he's definitely going to have to add 15-20 pounds to his frame as he really struggles at the moment finishing through any sort of contact at the hoop and you know adding that weight will definitely help him with that. The good news for him is that that's something that will come with time. Uh, once he gets to you know Memphis and eventually the league, they got people you know designed to help him do that, and it's something that just takes time. And I I definitely think he's capable of doing that. Another weakness for Imani is his shot selection. Uh, throughout his time in high school in AAU, he had a tendency to force a ton of bad shots, and his shot shooting percentages never really lived up to you know the true type of player that I think he could be. Uh, now that could be due to maybe you know him being relied on too much in the offense, his teammates not being quite at that level, his teams being overmatched, things of that nature. But still, you know, once he gets to Memphis, uh, he's gonna have to prove that he can be you know an efficient player, and then he can be someone who can play within an offense. Because at times in high school, uh, it was really ugly watching his games. Like I said, a ton of four shots, and then I guess you know another weakness you could say for Imani is that he's not necessarily an elite level athlete. He doesn't have that, you know, out of gym, out, jumping out of the gym type athleticism. He's a solid athlete. He's fluid. He can run. He can, you know, jump. But he's not, like I said, that, you know, Jalen Green type athlete or someone like that. And so I guess that would be considered, you know, a weakness and something that, you know, he can't really improve, I don't think, too much more uh, throughout his time, you know, in, you know, college and heading into the NBA. Overall, Imani Bates is not the next LeBron James or Kevin Durant. He's still a very solid prospect, someone who could easily go, you know, top three in the draft. And if he, you know, produces at Memphis and shows that the type of potential, I guess, that people thought he had, he could still very well be the number one pick uh, in this upcoming draft or whenever he decides to come out. But like I said, at the moment, He's not LeBron James, he's not Kevin Durant, and that's okay. He's still, like I said, a very solid prospect, someone who should be a top five pick in the draft uh, whenever he comes out. But I think it's just important to know that he's probably not the player everyone thought he was when he was 14 years old. And so, you know, that's disappointing, but at the same time, uh, he's still a very good player. He's still got a very bright future ahead of him. And he's, like I said, someone who should be a top five pick. So leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll talk to you guys later.